How did David kill Goliath? With a sling. If you were to tie uh, something heavy like a rock to the end of a string and start spinning it around above your head, what you'd find is that it would start off, if this was your head up there where you were holding it, it would start off on a big slant like that, pointing towards the ground. And the rock would be moving around in a circle like that. Can you imagine the path it would take? And then as you start spinning it faster, the slant would decrease like that. And the rock would start making a circle like so. And then when you got it really, really fast, if you were spinning it as fast as you could, you'd find the slant would approach a perfect horizontal like that and the tension in here would become very great. That's the kind of question we're going to, going to investigate today. So let's say we have, take this down, David with a string and the pebble at the end there. In actual fact it would be sort of a pocket and another string here. Let's ignore that. It's just a string and a pebble. And the period for this pebble to move around that big circle there above David's head is equal to 0 0.2. That means every 0.2 seconds the stone completes a full circle. So every second frequency, every second it completes five uh, journeys around the circle in which it's traveling. The stone also has a mass of 80 grams and the radius of the circle in which it's spinning is equal to 12 centimeters. The things we want to figure out, first of all the centripetal acceleration, the net centripetal force, the tension in that string there, and then the angle the string makes to the horizontal. Those are our four desired unknowns. First of all, centripetal acceleration. That's not very difficult. It's an object moving in a circle. We'll say at a constant speed since the period is not changing. We know T, we know R, we can figure out AC over here. So centripetal acceleration is equal to 4 pi squared times r is actually equal to 0 0.12, always work in meters, kilograms, seconds. So r is 0 0.12. Whilst we're here, we'll change the mass to kilograms. So 4 pi squared times r, 0 0.12, divided by t squared, so 0 0.2 squared, comes to a total of, I have 118.4, meters per second squared. Let's check that times point. Yeah, 118.4 meters per second squared. In which direction? Towards the middle of the circle in which it's moving. Not in that direction there. If the acceleration was in that direction, the path would not uh, follow a circle like that. I mean, it would be lifted up above the plane of that circle there. So the acceleration is towards the center of the circle. So I'll actually fill that in, in which it's moving. The net centripetal force. We can take a shortcut here. F equals MA. Centripetal force is just equal to M multiplied by this formula up here. We found out this was 118.4. So multiplying that by m, that's 118.4 times 0 0.080, which comes to 9.47 newtons. That is the net centripetal force there. But of course, there's no real force pointing in that direction. Let's do a force diagram now. We have the weight force. 0.080 kilograms is 0 0.8 
newtons directly down like that. We also have the tension force in the string there, so it's acting in the direction of the string, like so. This stone is not accelerating in the vertical plane. It's not moving down, it's not moving up. It's just moving side to side around in that plane there. So, this component of the tension force has to equal 0 0.8 newtons. I'll actually draw that better. That is the component. That's 0.8 newtons there. And the ten tension force will draw in yellow, extending to there. Furthermore, the tension force is the only force which is acting even vaguely in the direction of our imaginary centripetal force, which is there. So the tension force has to be supplying all of that uh, centripetal force. So this component of the tension force has to equal 9.47 newtons. Since we have two sides to this triangle, we can figure out the third side. The third side is the square root of 9.47 squared plus 0.8 squared, which comes to 9.50 newtons. 9.50. So tension is equal to 9.50. Finally, we're trying to figure out this angle up here. This is where a lot of people get stumped. How do we figure out this angle? I mean, we don't really have the triangle uh, of the height here and the length there. The interesting fact is, this angle here is the same as this angle under here. No, actually, there's a better way of figuring it out. This angle here, made by the horizontal and this white line, is the same as the angle made by the horizontal and the white line down here. You can sort of see these are the same shape. And if we were to increase the slant of the line, you can see that angle there is the same as that angle there. It's the same principle. So as long as we can figure out that angle there, we'll know that angle there. This one here, we know the opposite. We know the adjacent. Tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So tan negative 1, the inverse tan, of 0.8 over 9.47 is equal to the angle. And that comes to 4.8 degrees. So the angle, 4.8 degrees.